genes don't control us, we control them. And for example, with a diabetic, if they're going to not exercise, put on too much weight and eat all the wrong foods, fats and sugars, uh, if, if they've got a predisposition, they're very likely they will get diabetes. So this is where we actually can have control and not fear our gene pool. But if you know your gene pool, then you can work smart knowing what to do and what not to do to help it. And just generally, if we have a very healthy lifestyle and we've got a good mind-body connection, then um, you'll be okay with whatever your gene pool is. Um, the second brain, and that is coming back to the emotional brain, and as you can see there, it's got territorial fear, anger, to do with love, bonding, jealousy. They're just a few examples of your emotional brain. And without that, if we did not have emotions, it would be pretty miserable, wouldn't it? So I'm sure that... Um, and I don't know if anyone has experienced that where they feel numb. When we have shock, we can feel numb. It's like the emotions shut down. We just don't connect. Okay? And there are disorders where um, that brain, the emotions are too much. And I've worked a lot with people with uh, what we call dissociative disorders. And I don't know if you've ever heard of that sort or that word. Dissociation means we disconnect. And someone who has a dissociative disorder doesn't feel things. Okay, it's too hard and I, particularly in my practice, I work with a lot of uh, people, both men and women, who've had incredible trauma um, and they're so shut down and they don't feel things. And they can come and tell me what happened to them in very graphic terms that most people have feel traumatised by but they don't, they've disconnected emotionally. So we can do that. You know, we, we shut those things down if to survive. Again, it's about survival. The survival brain will shut it off. So there, we're talking about extremes now, but I'm sure there's been times where you feel just too numb, too much, too overwhelmed that you tend to just shut it down a bit. Or you go the other way. The emotions are too raw and too out there. Yeah, and this is where we have the anxiety disorders, the fear disorders, particularly where there's a hypervigilance. Okay, and I'm not sure where people are at with that. But it's the conscious third brain, which they call foresight, the ability to process in time and space. Yet the thinking brain is the smallest part of the brain. It's actually the front cortex here is your thinking brain. And that's the part of the brain that makes decisions, decides what it wants to do, uh, whether they be good or bad. But if you make a good decision, you're going to feel good. But if you make a bad decision, you're not going to feel so good. And we do that, don't we? Where you've made a decision, you think, oh, I wished I hadn't done that. I, you know, so we learn. We have to learn. In hindsight, we look back and learn. That's how we're meant to go. Memory. Now, every cell has a memory. It's not like, it's not like a conscious awareness memory. Okay? A good example, um, there's some good examples around now in research. And one was when I was much younger in my early 20s. I went overseas and I had a smallpox vaccination. And I didn't have a good reaction to it. Exactly 12 months, for I don't know how many years afterwards, on the day that I had that vaccination, it would flare up. Right? So my body does have a memory. It was remembering what had happened to it. So if you have a look at trauma and what happens, whether it be an accident or someone inflicts trauma on you, you have a body memory. Every cell remembers. Okay, so when we have that memory, because research shows that the somatic memory relies on the communication network of the body's nervous system. It is through the nervous system via the synapses that information is transmitted between the brain and all points of the body. So every part of your body responds to every thought you have. So if you have a negative thought, what's the body doing? Negative geared. If you have a positive thought, yeah, and a good example of a positive thought is they find that when you have positive thinking and you're in a positive environment, you get a lot of what we call endorphins going, and endorphins are your happy hormones. They make you feel good, and they actually reduce physical pain. And one of the things they find that when someone is laughing, they do not feel physical pain because of all the endorphins. Right? So we have a whole system that regulates, it's got every answer to our problems. And it's the only problem with it is if we overload the cellular memory with so many bad memories that it becomes a problem. So one of the things as we go, there are ways that you can help the body's memory to start to release it. And that's what partly what we're going to look at as we go. There are different herbal remedies. Passion flower is another one. Hawthorn's another one. You can get mixtures of these. Lemon balm, which you can grow and... Yeah, or Melissa it's called, they're all soothing the um, sympathetic nervous system. They're putting on the parasympathetic.
because they're slowing you down. So you don't have to do it all in the mind because it's hard to use your mind to do all this. You've sort of got to treat the physiology. Okay. So where I find, again, the magnesium gel helps to keep the nervous system calm. So even if you react, the sympathetic nervous system's reacting, your system is more able to deal with it, if that makes sense. Because you've got enough magnesium that helps to buffer the stress, right? But if you keep getting stressed, you'll find you'll deplete the magnesium and you'll find it's hard, you won't sleep well, you'll get cramping or just muscle tension, body tension, your nerves will be on edge not because of what your brain's doing, but because of what your body's doing. So this is where, and it's more likely the brain will react when you don't have enough of that um, magnesium because it's the nervous system's on edge constantly. You can see why people have what they call nervous disorders. A lot of it is treatable through the physiology as much as the mind.